In a previous video, we talked about the margin of error for a proportion. Uh, we looked at uh, adding and subtracting the margin of error from our sample proportion uh, to construct a confidence interval in hopes of calculating the true proportion for the population. Now we're going to shift gears. Instead of talking about a proportion, we're going to discuss a mean. Uh, so I have an example here. In a recent study of newborn infants, it was determined that the average weight of a newborn was 7.48 pounds with a standard deviation of 1.1228. That'd be 1.1228 pounds. Uh, the study looked at 20 newborns, uh, find a 90% confidence interval of the average weight of newborns. So that 90% confidence interval. We're going to construct a confidence interval, uh, and we would expect it to be correct. We're 90% confident that it would be accurate. So if we constructed uh, this kind of survey 10 times, we would expect to capture the population mean 9 out of 10 times. We would be 90% confident we would capture the population mean 9 out of 10 times. It also means that uh, 1 out of 10 times we're going to get it wrong. Uh, so uh, right now as I shoot this video, there's a lot of uh, political polls that are coming out. If those political polls were using a 90% confidence interval, uh, 1 out of every 10 is probably wrong. 1 out of every 10 uh, doesn't express the actual opinion of the American people. So something to keep in mind, uh, polls can be wrong. Uh, so let's take a look at the formula. So once again, we're going to add and subtract our margin of error from our uh, sample mean, in this case that would be 7.48, uh, to construct a confidence interval in hopes of capturing the population mean. We see here uh, E is a little different now. Uh, we now see uh, T sub C times uh, S divided by the square root of N. S is your sample standard deviation, so here that would be 1.1228 n is your sample size. In this case, it's going to be 20. t would be your critical value, and it's the critical value for a student t distribution. That's an alternative to the normal distribution. The student t distribution uh, looks at uh, a degree of freedom. So the larger your sample size, the larger your degree of freedom, the larger your degree of freedom, the closer the student t distribution will look in shape like the normal distribution. So uh, we could go through how to uh, find a t-score uh, by hand using a chart but instead, we're going to just hop straight in and look at the calculator. So here, uh, we're going to once again go to stat and over to test, similar to how we did when finding the margin of error for a uh, proportion. Instead of using z integral like we did last time, we're now going to use a t integral since this uses a student t distribution. Uh, we're going to want to select stats instead of data. If you were listing data in L1, uh, you would use data. But we actually, uh, we've reported the sample mean and sample standard deviation. So we're going to go over to stat. I'm going to enter that here, so I'll enter 7.48. I'll enter 
two two eight. Our sample size is twenty, and we want a ninety percent confidence interval. So I'm going to put point nine here. I'm going to tell it to calculate, and here we go. Here is our confidence interval. It looks like it stretches from uh, about 7.05 to uh, 7.91. Uh, so most babies are between 7 and 8 pounds. Give me the mean and the standard deviation and the sample size. Uh, the last step here, uh, perhaps you want to know E. You want to know the margin of error that was used in this test. Uh, so what I would do to determine that, I would take the top of my interval, subtract it from the bottom, So that gives me the range of my interval. I would then divide it by 2. So uh, if you were to do 7.48 plus 0.4341, you're going to get the 7.9141. If you were to do 7.48 minus the 0.4341, you're going to get the bottom of your interval, your 7.0459. So your E here, your margin of error, uh, was 0.4341 pounds.